Okay, let's get started. I want to talk to you about how to magically manifest more money, which is the secret behind Think and Grow Rich. And my goal is really simple to show you the science and techniques you must understand to change your attraction point. And I want to give you the exact week-by-week -week process guaranteed to develop your millionaire mind, a process I've been developing for the last 10 years. And I want to let you know gravity exists but is superseded by lift. That means that when I'm sitting on a plane, I am superseding gravity because the plane is flying even though gravity is there, but on the plane, gravity is still present. Well, why is that important for you to understand? Well, you can walk from one side of the United States to the other. You can do it and you can be in gravity or you can use lift, which is the faster way to get there. Gravity still exists. This is the exact same as hard work. A lot of people say, Chris, but it's hard work that's going to get me there. Let me ask you this question. Do you know somebody that's worked really, 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 really hard? and has not had the success that they want. Clearly hard work isn't the answer, but it's part of it. I don't know anybody that's created something that I admire that hasn't put in the work. So it's there, it's like gravity. You know, gravity still exists on the plane. Like I still, I can sit down, I can eat food. Gravity's still there, but there's something else. And, and that's the thing that I wanna talk about today because if you're an aspirational business person or an investor and you can't understand why you're not creating the financial freedom you desire, and you're willing to do whatever it takes to hit your goal, then, then today's going to be a really breakthrough for you. Because I will give you a step-by-step -step plan. I will not waste your time. I will take you through cutting-edge techniques, and we will go through a demonstration. And I'll tell you about the next steps with me. Look, I do have a 12-month program you can be a part of. We open it up a couple times a year. And if you're watching this, that means we're about to open it up, and there's an opportunity. So I'll tell you about that at the end. Now... If you've ever wondered why some people break through to millions and others don't, or if you've ever said to yourself, if I just had more money, you know, then I could do this or then I could do that. Well, you know, today's really important because it's true that you can live in the same house as someone with the same upbringing, with the same experience, with the same everything, and they can get worse results than you or better results than you. And I want you to never have the problem of saying, if I only had more money, then I could do this or then I could do that. Because that's living, that's living in sacrifice. And so a big thing I always ask to people is I say, why do you not have everything that you desire? Why do you not have the money? What's your reason? I mean, for somebody as smart as you, as talented as you, with the opportunities that you've had living in the country that you live in, in the time that we live in, with the amount of time that you've been on the planet, how have you been able to create a place to not be in abundance? I mean, how, how have you done that? What's your reason? What's your excuse? What's that? Because I really want you to take, you know, take control or take ownership and say, you know what? Yeah, I did this. I created this. I've created all the good and I'm going to create the good to continue because until you say, you know what, I, I created this and I was in control of what I have, then, you know, you're not going to be able to change and step into what you want because it was somebody else that did it. Look, I hear people all the time say, you know what, Chris, well, you, you didn't know what it was like in 2000. Well, I did know what it was like in 2009. I lost the money as well. But, you know, Chris, I had this happen or that happen. Well, you know, I say to them, I said, well, you chose to be in the relationship. You chose to stay with them even though you knew it wasn't right. You, choose to, you chose to keep on giving them another chance. You, you kind of chose that bad marriage and to go that way. Or you chose to put all your money in property. You chose it. And therefore, you know, you chose for that, that to happen. It was, it was back to your responsibility. And if you don't take that back, then there's not too much I can tell you. So here's what I want you to own right now is that you created your success and you've also created your blocks. And so let's ask, well, how big is your problem? You know, and by the way, do you like that I'm getting straight into it? I hope that you are because I want to make sure you get a lot out of today. The, the first question I want to ask is, how big is your problem? Have you had the same income for years without any changes? You just can't seem to get to a higher bracket. You stay at the same level no matter what. If it is, I want you just to write down a number one. It's going to be important later that you, you just can't seem to get your income to increase. Or if you've got the opposite, have you been able to make more money, but somehow you're always back to where you started? Each time you get more money, you attract a circumstance that sabotages you, and then you suddenly have more expenses. Or when you get more money, do you just feel a need to spend it? Like if I was to give you a thousand bucks right now, you're already starting to think, well, I'd use it for this or use it for that. You, you know, it doesn't stick with you. Next one, 
is what if someone handed you a million dollars in a box right now? What if I said, hey, here's a million bucks for no reason other than you're alive, how would you feel? Would you feel guilty? Would you be like, what's his intention? Uh, I didn't do anything to earn this. How would it feel? Think about that for a second. If I was just to give you a bunch of money, because the universe wants to give you money. People want to give you money, but how would you feel just to get it? How would you feel just to receive? Interesting, isn't it? What if you just got a million bucks? Then what if tomorrow I said, hey, here's another million. Next day, here's another million. Well, I don't know what to do with it. How, what, am, what if I lose it? You know, and I want you to just associate to that. Uh, are you like me? Do, do you go to program after program after program and the programs never seem to work for you? That was huge for me. Like the amount of programs I went to, I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars and it was always like, oh yeah, this one. Now I'll go to the next one. This one's going to save me. This one's going to save me. And I, But what I realized is at the end of it, <laughs> It had to be me. Well, you know, I saw other people winning in programs. It couldn't always be that it was the program's fault. On some level, are you afraid of being successful? What would happen if you turned up to a family gathering, say Christmas or a birthday party of a, an older relative, and you drove up in the nice fancy car where all your, you, you know, your children and you, you have the best house, the best presents, and you've got all this money. You're buying everyone drinks, and everything else. How would you feel? How would others react? And how would that feel for you? Or are you living for someone else's success? Like you're actually not receiving it for you. You know, I see a lot of parents just live for their kids and they give the, the example that you should never just enjoy your life. Are, are you just living for someone else? Hmm. I just want to leave that up for a second. Which one stands out the most for you? I want you to write it down. What's your biggest problem? It's interesting to know because... Once you start to understand where, the, where your problem is, then you can start changing it. See, the problem is really your emotional vibration. And so I always write this up, but if people wanted to have more money, and they always say to me, well, more money equals abundance, or it equals freedom. And I say, okay, great. So if more money equals abundance and freedom, if I was to look back at your last week, your last 24 hours, you know, how much of that did you live in abundance or freedom? And they say, well, none, because I need to get the money to feel it. And so I say, well, what does money feel like now? And they say, well, money right now feels like there's not enough or that it's scarce. And I say, can you see how that this can't exist? You can never get the more money because the, this has to change. You'd have to be someone different. Your emotional vibration says more money is attached to freedom and abundance, and I feel scarcity. So more money can't show up because you're blocked because of your vibration. I see this all the time. One of the secrets is you've got to get into it now. And same with someone who wants to get into a relationship. They say, if I had a great relationship, I'd feel connection, support, and love. But I hate being single. You know, I don't feel good being single. I feel lonely. I see the amount of people that create a relationship and then still find a way to be lonely is staggering, just like the amount of people that start a business and make it look just like a job. <laughs> staggering. And so, so I want you to realize that the, the truth is, is what you want has to equal how you feel. And so you must feel it now. You must get in it now. And I want you to just do a, you know, a little bit of an audit. If I was to look at your last month, you know, how much are you sitting in those feelings, true feelings of abundance, good enough, gratitude, everything that you're connected with your desires? Because that's the important thing. So I'm going to cover some big things today. First, the secret five-step method to magically manifest everything you desire in any area of life without the risk of failure. The second thing, I'm going to show you some neuroscience and, and how to really shift and change your brain using neuroscience, epigenetics, neuroplasticity. And I'm going to give you some, some really good science so you, that your brain understands how it works. And lastly, I studied elite producers, the ones out producing everyone else. And I'm going to share with you the secret six superpowers so that you know exactly how to step in to become an elite producer. Now, really quickly, because of this, I'm a two times best-selling author. I manifested the love of my life. I've lived and worked from dozens of cities, spoken to a live audience of over 100,000. I'm a multi-million dollar business owner. I'm a first-generation millionaire. I've lived a life of freedom, doing what matters most. And so I guess I want to let you know that I'm living this. I have a digital marketing company. I have a training company. We have property. We have investments in hair salons and fitness businesses. I have businesses, and I've applied this. I wrote books. I uh, got featured in a movie with Tony Robbins. And so why am I telling you this is I want to let you know that I've done it and now I can share and show you. Uh, one of the greatest things I love is I can work from anywhere in the world. Typically, 
you know, this is my, my working environment, running four multi-million dollar companies right now, sitting by a beautiful location um, with my absolutely amazing wife. And there she is there helping me film and shoot some videos, me on a beautiful beach um, creating some content for people. I've been lucky enough to have someone like Gary Vaynerchuk reach out to me and his team, um, Glenn Twiddle and others who are bringing him to to Australia reached out to me to help do the marketing for some of the top in the industry. So I've been really lucky to help someone like him. And I've also been lucky to be featured in a movie with Tony Robbins and the Dalai Lama. And I got that um, basically because of the stuff that I'm teaching you. I've also been really lucky to, to find and connect with some of the top mentors on the planet. And this is Joel Bauer, and, and he's mentored Tony Robbins and Mark Victor Hansen and uh, T. Harvecker and Jordan Belford, and I was really lucky to, to have him become a client of mine and to be able to help him and run his events. And so it's been a it's been really a, an awesome journey. But the, the truth is, it wasn't always this way. You know, I grew up middle class, a house full of love, following society's rules, and I couldn't you know I couldn't have had a better childhood. My I love my parents and I thank them so much. You know, but the truth was, I went to uni, I got a job, I followed the rules, I followed the plan. And I found myself stuck in a job wanting more, haven't you? You know, I saw others having freedom and there I was, nine to five, just kind of, you know, spinning my wheels. So I started a business and I failed. And what happened was, <laughs> this is actually me, this is a real picture, that's me, that's my real dreadlocks. Is I, I started a business and I, and I realized, hey, like, the business wasn't for me, the job wasn't for me, I didn't know what to do. But I knew that there had to be a path because... You know, society wasn't right for me. I wasn't just made to spend 40 years spending 40 hours every single week, the 40-40 plan, just to do, you know, do that for the rest of my life. And, and so I was really lucky to start being given the new path. And not enough people understand the entrepreneur path. And so it starts out with, you know, creating value and skills and becoming an apprentice. Now, if you want to magically manifest money, you're going to need to be an entrepreneur. And so a lot of us understand how to create value and get skills and become an apprentice. And then what happens next is we go, you know what, I've got enough value, I've got enough skills, I'm going to go out there and start. And that's when you turn into a starter. You create sales, you get your minimum viable product, whether that's you're a coach, you're a consultant, you have a product, you have a service, you have a cafe, you have a gym, whatever it is, you go out there and you start. And then you become successful enough that you become self-employed. And this is the area of burnout. This is when you learn to deliver to clients and you just have a glorified job. Now you're delivering to clients, you're doing sales, you're doing marketing, you're doing bookkeeping, you're doing the accounting, you're doing admin, you, you know, you're, you're doing follow-up reporting, you're doing social media, you're just doing everything. And the area of self-employed is, is the area of burnout and it's a lot for a lot of people, it's the area of retreat because suddenly they start out for this business to have freedom and they've got less of it. And if you're in that right now, I'm so glad you're here because I want you to know that to the old version of you, where you're at right now looks really, really good and successful, but to where you're going, it's just the start. The next step is you become a promoter. You create leads and automated sales. The next step is you become a builder. You create systems and you automate delivery. Then the next step is you become an operator, team culture and automated business. And I'm very lucky to have businesses now that work without me so that I can have freedom and enjoy my life. And those businesses change the world. And I get to work on the parts in the business that I love instead of having to do it all. See, something amazing happened for me. So I had this mentor and he taught me that. And I, I went, wow, this is fantastic. He had a $3 million business. There I was, I tried a business, I failed. And, and he showed me this path and I went, wow, I never knew that there was a path like this. I, I thought, you know, the uh, only thing I knew was to get a job, which is basically just number one, create value, get skills, and, and then keep on doing that. And he, he said, you know, it's completely different, Chris. And his name is Mark Deason, an amazing mentor. And he said, he showed me, he had a $3 million business at the time. And he started mentoring me. And I was 20 years old. And he started showing me, you know, what it is that I needed to do. And, and one of the things he first taught me is he explained this, this really great story about Joe and Bob. And I want to tell you this story. So I want to take you back to ancient times. And I want you to imagine two men, they get tasked with bringing water to a village. There's Joe and there's Bob, good friends. And they were so lucky because every bucket of water they brought back uh, to the city, they got paid a dollar. And back then there was a lot of money. So they were so excited. They walked on the first day. The first day they figured out they could bring a hundred buckets of water back. There's Joe and Bob. And they're excited. The first week they buy, they're making a hundred dollars a day. They're feeling absolutely fantastic, top of the world, privileged in love. They love it. 
their wives are happy, everyone's happy, they're great, they're getting an awesome job. And so the weeks go by and all of a sudden Bob starts saying to Joe, you know, like there has to be a better way. Joe says, Bob, look, you just got to keep on doing it. This is fantastic. We're so lucky. Bob's going, no, there's, there's going to be a better way. So Bob takes half his days off and he goes down to 50 buckets a day and he starts thinking and planning, going, there has to be a better way. Joe tells him, Bob says, look, we've been given this gift. We've got this responsibility to bring the water back to the village, back to the city. We've got to do this. But Bob takes half his time off, so he's only bringing 50 buckets in a day. And and, you know, the, the town kind of ridicules him and criticizes him. Said, we gave you this job, you know, and you're not even doing the work. Look at Joe. And, and they put Joe up on a pedestal. He's the one that he, he gets the nice flash camels, the best silks. He gets to shout everyone drinks at the bar. He's rich. He's the one looking at He brings the water. Whereas Bob, everyone said, well, you know, this guy's not doing anything. So months go by. And, and as the months go by, Bob gets a brilliant idea. So he starts to tell Joe, he said, I've got this idea. I know what we need to do. We can, we can create something, but we're both, you're going to need to, you know, decrease what you're doing now to be able to do something. Joe says, you're crazy, man. You're crazy. I, I can't believe how selfish you are. And they, they lost their friendship. And so Bob goes away and he starts, he starts digging. And so he starts digging. He spends half his day pulling in the water, half his day digging. And six months go by and and so now it's been a year, and, and Joe and Bob don't speak anymore. The town thinks that Bob's crazy, and he's just been digging. He's just been digging. And he tries to convince Joe and tell Joe all about it, but he keeps on digging. Joe doesn't want to listen. A year and a half goes by, and finally, Bob finishes his trench. And on that day, after all of that, you know, there's Joe, and Joe's got these calluses. His back's hurting. He's bent out of shape. He's not going to be able to continue on at 100 buckets a day. But on that day, 18 months in, finally, Bob finishes his trench and he turns on the tap and in flows down his trench that had been building for that 18 months, a flow of water that was unstoppable. A thousand buckets a day flew in. All of a sudden, Joe's out of business. Bob tries to reason with him, said, I tried to tell you that this was a better way. He said, I'll give you some of it. I want to help you out. Joe, Joe didn't want to hear it. He was so distraught. Suddenly now he didn't have a job and Bob had created this system. So Bob hires Joe and helps uh, hires him to help him with the trench, to help him with the pipeline, with the flow, to make it right, to get everything right. And all of a sudden, Bob's now getting paid $1,000 a day for his trench because there's a 1,000 buckets coming. So guess what? Bob now goes to all the other towns and creates a trench, creates a pipeline, and creates a massive infrastructure, financially free. And when I first got taught this story, I realized I'd been living my life as Joe, the hard work, the doing it with my, my effort. And I realized that even though he, I was privileged to have what I had, there was a better way. And I realized I had to build my trench. I had to think differently. And, and that's what I want you to realize as well. And so instantly, as I was taught this and told this, it became crystal clear to me how to transition from average to the top 1%. My mentor told me, he said, Chris, the way you do anything is the way you do everything. And so he said, Chris, you can't just focus on your business. You need to get your fitness, your family, how you're fulfilled. And you, and you need to work on exactly what you want to get freedom from. But I was full of fear. I asked myself, you know, what if, could I really do it? What if I failed? And so I thought, you know what? You've tried having a job after following the system. It didn't work. You've tried having a business and it didn't work. But, but you've got to try again. I realized the worst case was I'd just end up right back where I was. That was the worst case. So I thought, you know what? I'll give it a go. And so I started straight away. And at that time, I, I just wanted to make 100 grand, find the right woman for me, my partner in crime, have a body I was proud of, and to positively change the world. That's all I wanted. Results were slow, okay? And I was battling myself. And have you ever felt that? Like you're battling yourself? Like you're at complete war? Well, that was the same with me. And so for the next two years, I kept on spending money trying to get this working. I knew I needed a trench. I knew I needed to be able to make money without my time. And I, and I knew it. So I did speaker training and marketing training, mentorship program. I was trained by some of the best on the planet. And results came, but it was a war. Have you felt the war? You know, you're so committed. You're going to make it happen, but it's a war. Everywhere else, I saw others winning. So I knew, you know what? It had to be me. I had to do something. And, and I came across this story of monkeys, and, and I want to share this with you. So there were, there were five monkeys in a cage, and these scientists were watching these monkeys, and, and they decided to do an experiment. So they opened up a, the top of the cage, and they put a ladder and some food at the top. And what they did, obviously, is if they put food at the top of the ladder, they, the monkeys started to climb the ladder, right? 
And so the monkeys start to climb the ladder at the top, there's food. And so as soon as the monkeys start to climb, guess what? <laughs> the scientists would spray all of the monkeys with cold water. And so obviously the monkeys didn't like that. And so what would happen eventually is if any monkey tried to climb the ladder, all the other monkeys would grab it, claw it, and hit the monkey and scream at the monkey for being so selfish because if any of them climbed the ladder, they all got sprayed with freezing cold water and they didn't like that. So what happened after repetition is no monkey would climb the ladder. It didn't matter even if they left the cage open, put whatever food up there, no monkey would climb it because they didn't want to get beaten up and they didn't want to get sprayed with water. So here's what was interesting is a scientist replaced one of the monkeys. They put a different monkey in and guess what happened? As soon as the food was put at the top of the ladder, that monkey went, wow, well, look, there's some food, there's a ladder, I'm going to climb and get it. As soon as they did, all the monkeys raced in from around the cage, pulled it down, screamed at it, yelled at it, and said, don't climb the ladder. And this monkey must have been confused. No water was sprayed. And so eventually they replaced another monkey. Now what was interesting is even the new monkey that had never been sprayed with water joined in on the screaming and the beating up of the monkey when it tried to climb the ladder. So they, they changed all of the monkeys out. So now there were five monkeys in there that had never been sprayed with cold water. And they noticed that the behavior kept on happening, that no monkey would climb the ladder, and if a monkey did try to climb it to get the food, all the other monkeys would scream and shout and pull it down. Those monkeys then had children, and then all of a sudden those children did the same behavior. And it's interesting, I think if you went and asked one of those, those the, the children of the monkeys that never got sprayed with water, uh, you know, you'd, you'd have to realize that it's not DNA, it's not genetics, because the, those monkeys never got sprayed with cold water. It was learned. I bet if you asked them, say, why don't you climb the ladder, there's food up there. I think you would hear, you know, my parents told me never climb that ladder. You know, we don't climb ladders around here. And this became such a potent and interesting story for me because I don't know where a lot of our beliefs and ideas come from. And I started to think about this a lot and ask myself, what does that have in common with me? And what does that have in common with you? I started to realize I need to work on my mindset. So I got certified in NLP twice, hypnosis, success strategy, life coaching. I did all the Tony Robbins stuff, money and you, matrix energetics, manifesting all possibilities, EFT, you name it, I did it. And, and I realized that the fastest way from where I was to where I wanted to be was to find the person that was there and have them guide and mentor me. So I kept on finding coaches and, and I ended up finding someone who was actually at the level that I wanted. He was making over 10 million a year. I said, well, you coach me. And he said, Chris, it's a hundred thousand dollars a year. And I thought, well, screw it. I'll do it. So I got this high level coach and I worked on myself every day and I listened to what he said. And what I realized is, is that all the beliefs are unconscious. You can't consciously know what you need to change or you would have changed it. And so I start working on these and I, and I started changing my thinking and I pulled clients, made things happen. And, and I realized that, you know, business was easy. So I created a business called Legends Academy, a three-day course, one-on-one -on -one coaching and online programs. And, and my biggest pain became my biggest opportunity. I, I realized I could really help men become confident, change their mindset. So, so I did that. And, and the thing is, is, it was a dream come true, you know, like really easy. The business was easy. It was fun. It wasn't hard. I made a million dollars in a year helping people travel the world location free. And, and so what happened is I continued to do it. And I built another business and another business. And all of a sudden... I had a four and a half million dollar company with total freedom. I was traveling the world, having fun, having a ball, loving it. And I went, wow, what a change. And then all of a sudden, you know, my life fell apart. <laughs> so th this here is Mark Deason, and he was my first mentor. You'll see us up there uh, speaking together. The bottom left is us in Bali together. The bottom right is me as a lion. And, and the, the top right is our last photo together. He's unfortunately, he's the one in the box. And, Mark Deason was, was killed in a motorcycle accident in uh, March 3rd, 2016. And you know, he was my first mentor. We'd been in business together. We created the four and a half million dollar company together. We did it. He was everything for me to my mindset, my business. He was everything. We business partner, friends. And all of a sudden I found myself in massive debt. And I went from a four and a half million dollar business to overnight losing my best friend and realizing, you know, that my business was built around us and and uh, I realized the fragility of life, just how fragile our existence is. And, and all of a sudden I'm 360 grand in debt. I had four and a half million dollar business the day before. Now I'm in debt and not knowing what to do. And 
So I kind of pulled myself together and I realized that he was, he was giving me a gift. And, you know, at the time I was really emotional. Looking back on it now, I can see the gift, but I didn't for a long time. And, and I realized I needed to prove everything that I'm now sharing with you. And I said, well, you know, now after building the company, now losing it through, you know, unexpected circumstances, how do I, how do I prove what it is I know? So the first thing is I got a clear contribution-based vision. It's how did I want to help the world? I then had an aligned mind, and that's written in past tense for a reason. Then I created the right emotions and connected with my vision. I created a massive action plan and got peer review. I did a million dollars in nine months, 2.1 million in 12 months, and now two years later, I have a company valued at over $5 million, all based on my thinking. And people always ask me, Chris, well, how'd you do it so fast? And I say, well, I'd already done the work internally, so when this crazy unexpected thing happened, I was already there internally, so I knew what to do and I was able to bounce back. And now I'm working on breaking through that $5 million barrier and going further because I truly believe that the more money that you earn, the more you can help. Money is a unit of choice. I'm able to create more charities, employ more staff, reach more people, talk to you. So it's such a good thing. And so in this journey, I met a billionaire. And there's something special about becoming a billionaire. There's only eight from where I'm from, I'm from New Zealand. There are eight billionaires. I think there's like 28 from Australia. And obviously there's only 2,200 and something in the whole world. So to become a, a billionaire was huge. And uh, the self-made billionaire invited me to speak with his friends. And so I'm standing in this room of the 12 richest people in all of Austin, Texas. And they said to me, Chris, it's all vibration, thinking, and manifestation. And I said, well, that's what I know. And they said, Chris, well, what you know is true. You're on the right path and you have to teach what you know. And I just want you to imagine having a billionaire confirm what you know and say, no, that is the answer. That's what you need to do. It's the truth. And that's when I decided, I thought, you know what? I've got created this digital marketing company. I've got this going. I'm making great money. And that, that's why I'm here talking to you because I realized I needed to teach this. But I realized I needed to teach it and share it in a way that, that comes from a place of science and actual truth and actual making it work. So it's really important that you understand what's on the screen. You must be in your future feeling now. The one statement that I noticed about all of these people is that they were truly satisfied with everything that they had. Whether they lost money or made money, they were still the same. And this was the hardest thing for me to learn is that we must get into the feeling of what we want now. We must let go of trying to get away from something or towards something. I see so many people say, oh, Chris, you know, um, I started my business because I didn't, I didn't want to have a job. And so we're here in the now and we have this past. And what we're actually doing is getting away from um, no control or no fulfillment or not enough, not enough money. And we're trying to get away from this. And by trying to get away from it, it's almost like it's a chain, a ball and chain. Well, not almost, it is. Because we're stuck in that vibration. We haven't cleared it. We're just trying to run away from it. And so the truth is, you've got to go into it. You've got to go into it. You've got to clear it, bring it into now. And the second thing is we, we sit in this place of desire of these things we want. Money, you know, love, happiness. We, we desire all these things. But the truth is, is if you're not feeling it now, you have this emotional barrier that means you can never get there. And so what I realized is yeah, you have to get it now. You gotta let go of trying to get away from something and towards something. So if this statement doesn't work for you, this is where you've got to create, got to do some work. I am truly satisfied with everything I have now and I want more of it. And so I created this magnetic mind program. I studied neuroscience, epigenetics. I wanted to prove to our conscious brains exactly what worked. I interviewed billionaires and I reverse engineered what worked for me. And so I want to talk a little bit about brain plasticity because uh, some people say to me, Chris, but I can't change. You know, I am the way I am. Well, the truth is we can all change. Right now, you can forget where your keys are. You can forget someone's name. Your brain is always, you can learn something new. I mean, we've always got new things coming out in society. There were, you know, Facebook Live came out. We have new AI. There's always new things that we need to learn. And your brain rewires and learns things. Now, the, the funny thing is about brain plasticity is have you ever heard the saying, if you don't use it, you'll lose it? 
If you don't work out a certain muscle, you're going to lose the tone. So what if you could lose your ability to feel scarcity? What if you could lose your ability to feel anxious? What if you could lose your ability to do that? Of course you can. And by the way, we're so, we're so programmed to feel certain things. I mean, you don't understand the power of your thinking and how you're actually creating your life based on that. It's huge. But I want to show you something because it is so important for us to realize that we can rewire our brain. It's so important to have that power. We are in total control. Check this out, though. This is, a, this is how your brain actually looks when it's slowed down. So these are some electrical impulses, and I want you to have a look. We're going to zoom up on this. I want to show you what it's like when someone's learning something. So when someone's learning something, two neurons are coming together, and you can see in the middle of the screen here, two neurons starting to come together. And this is the process of learning something new. And here's how it looks really, really, really zoomed up. This is a process of, of actually making a new connection. And so the interesting thing that I notice is this connection is happening all the time. And so we, we have this, this, this brain that's able to prune itself of stuff that it doesn't want to remember, and then it can actually create new connections. Now, the reason why one seminar, when we look at that right in the middle, I just think this is so cool. <laughs> Look at that. That's literally learning. By the way, this is happening inside your head right this second. As you're learning and watching this, you're making a new connection going, wow, I've never seen that before. And that connection is actually happening inside your head. I'll show you it again. This is actually happening right now inside your brain. I think it's fascinating. See, why a, why a seminar doesn't work, and I study NLP and hypnosis and all these things, is that make a new connection. But that connection was never wrapped around with enough emotion to make it stick and enough repetition. You see, you can probably right now remember where you were September 11, 2001, can't you? Why can you remember something that was, you know, nearly 20 years ago, but then, you know, you, you can't remember, <laughs> you can't remember, you know, what, what you need to do next week or, or what you did, you know, just a week ago. Why can you remember certain things? It's because of the intensity of the emotion and then the amount of repetition. And that's how we create memory. The problem is, is we've remembered how to have scarcity or remembered how to feel not good enough for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, however long you've been on the planet. We've been remembering that. And where did we learn that from? We learned it from our parents. And how long were they remembering it? And where did we get our first feelings from? Well, when we're in the womb. And it comes from there. And so we've got this whole DNA thing. And so the truth is, is that it takes a heck of a lot to change. My, what I, my experience, it takes a good 12 months of focusing a very specific daily plan um, to be able to make it happen. So what I realized is the method is you create contribution-based clarity. You, you ensure that you understand neuroscience, epigenetics, and the spiritual laws of money. You have a daily action plan, which is going to create a magic manifestation. And I created a 12-week process. And I, and I want to share a little bit about how that all works. So... We have feelings that create an action. I hope you can see that. Feelings that create an action. Now, the truth is, is how you feel will create an action. If you, if you don't feel good enough to make a sales call, you won't take the action the right way. So your feelings control your actions. But what creates a feeling? Well, you get a transmitter. You get a transmitter, a signal sent from your brain. Your brain sends a signal or a transmitter to actually go to a gene, epigenetics, meaning above the gene, epigenetics, goes to a gene. The, the gene actually releases a peptide, which creates a feeling in your body. Now, you all know this to be true because you, you can experience, you could have a sexual fantasy and you can realize that you send a transmitter to your body and it creates a feeling, which then creates an action, especially the guys on the call, you know exactly what that's like. And so the truth is, is what creates, what sends this? Well, this is done by your thinking. So just check this out for a moment. Your thinking sends a transmitter down to your gene, which creates your feelings, which creates your action. Now notice that this, where this comes from. The, the transmitter, the gene, the feelings, has no idea that if this thinking came from just your head or from an external event. It has no idea. All it knows that it got this information. It just knows it got the information. So here's the truth. Here's the truth is if you learn how to control this on a daily basis and control your feelings, everything's going to change for you. But the problem is, is for the last 20 or 30 years, you've been thinking in a certain way that's created certain feelings and you're addicted to them. 
And so I know I can take anyone from struggle to six figures and from six to seven by understanding how to take control of this. And let's just give you a quick demo. Right now, if you were to think about running out of money, not having enough, not being able to pay your bills, can you just feel what that'd be like? Like, I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills this week. I don't have enough money. There you go. You've probably likely thought about it. You've brought up a situation and you're likely feeling nervousness or anxiety somewhere in your stomach. That's exactly what's happened. You've just given yourself a dose of anxiety. Now, can you also imagine right now, imagine just winning um, the lottery. Can you imagine just being given everything you want? Can you imagine a time when you got given gifts and you're just allowed to just be free? Can you remember a time sitting on the beach and you didn't have to do anything and everything was just perfect? Yeah, you can, right? You can, you can imagine being relaxed and that's going to send another transmitter and give you a different dose. And so this 12-week process shows you how to start shifting right down at the gene level. And so the big problem is this, is your natural conflicts are going to stop you more than anything. You see, the biggest reason why you don't change is your past is safe and proven. Because you're alive right now, it's proven to be survived. Your past meaning what was passed down from your parents, because they were the first you looked to to see what's survivable, and then also what you've lived. So your past is safe and proven, meaning your future is unsafe. So what do you have to do? You have to learn this magnetic mind process to make your future proven because you've lived it internally so many times. Hear me on this. Your body doesn't know where it came from. So your body can live a future consistently with you so that when it shows up in the real world, it's already proven to be survived because you've been living it every single blooming morning. That's how you create change. But the, the mistakes that people make is the first one is they think something external will make their internal different. Let me ask you, if I gave you a million dollars right now, how would you feel? People say, a million dollars, I feel relieved, I feel happy, I feel excited. If I give you a million bucks right now, here you go, have it. How would you feel? I said, no, right here, I'm signing the check, it's yours, I want to give it to you, here you go. If you just won lottery, how would you feel? Wow, I just won all this money, 100 grand, $1,000. See, if you, then I want to ask you a second question is, compared to that feeling, how do you feel every single day? Well, I don't feel relieved or excited every day, Chris. I don't feel like that. It feels different. If it's different, the answer is you're not in alignment with, with receiving a ton of money because you think that that money, that external money, will make you feel different. Let me say it a different way. What if right now someone stole all the money out of your bank? How would you feel? Ripped off, pissed off, cheated. Yeah, right? Someone just took all your money. Something external is controlling your internal. It's the first big mistake. The second mistake, taking advice from broke people. You must never take fitness advice from a fat person, relationship advice from a single person. Never take advice from somebody who you don't want to step into a life that they have. That's a big one. The amount of times we've taken advice from our parents and would never trade for their life. The last one is trying to avoid failure. These are the big mistakes. I'm going to cover some others. The failure is something that's going to happen. You're not going to get it right. Failure is actually just an expectation that didn't get met. Now, there's a difference between walking off a building and experiencing ultimate failure and the small failures that are necessary. So I want you to imagine when you learned to ride a bike and you had maybe a father figure or a friend or an older brother or sister or somebody was holding the back of the bike for you as you learned to pedal. And what you would have noticed at some point, you're, you're yelling back to them, hey, you know, are you holding me? Yeah, I'm holding you. You're holding me? Yeah, I'm holding you. At some point, they let go and they didn't tell you. And they were running behind you. That's, that's what you need to do is you need to have someone there helping you. The first mistake that I see is people aren't clear on what they really want. And this is the first thing we do with you. We get you super clear on your life, where you want to be in a year, where you want to be in a quarter, all the way down to now. Mistake number two is you're stuck in a limiting pattern. You continually just keep on playing the same pattern out again and again. Number three, you're living to make someone else happy. So it's a parent or it's even a child or it's a brother or a sister or you're, you're comparing yourself. You're just trying to live to beat someone else. Number four, you've not shifted core beliefs. You're only focused on strategy, like putting clean water in a dirty fishing bowl. Uh, the water never is, never is clean. It doesn't matter how good the strategy is. N number five, this is a big one. People try to find uh, proof of their future success by looking in their past. 
<laughs> you'll never find uh, the proof of future success in your past. That's why it's success. It has to be different. Number six, you're out of emotional alignment with what you want. And something called cognitive dissonance, which is when um, you say, you know, I really want to be rich, but rich people are evil. Or uh, I want to be skinny, but I don't like, uh, I want to be healthy and thin, but I don't like uh, eating vegetables. You know, you're out of alignment. You, you know, you want to be, you, you know, there's something else holding you back. The next mistake is you do not have mentors who are where you want to be. Huge one. So we're going to go into the steps, but I just want to ask you right now, are you enjoying this so far? I told you we'd cover a lot of stuff, and we're not even into the steps yet. That's just me getting you really clear on where this came from, what it's all about, and why this is the most important thing. I want to let you know, if you don't know what I'm teaching you on this, and if you don't get this, 